Um, we're going to get started real quick. If you want to stand with me, I'll just pray, and then we'll get right into worship. Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together in your house today, Lord. I thank you for this wonderful day of celebration of all the fathers in our lives. And Lord, we just thank you today that you are the best father we could ever have. And so we just come to you today and we lift our hands and we worship you. And we just thank you for being the best and most wonderful God that we could have and the best father. Amen. For this day, we're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the skies. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here, you're the reason we're singing. I'm so happy to have my daughter home from Bible school. Welcome home to Alexa. Praise the Lord. God is good. And I'm happy to have you guys here this morning with us. Um, if you're a visitor for the first time, 
or the first time in a long time, in the seat back in front of you, there's a welcome uh, contact card. Fill out that information. Um, put it in our offering at offering time, and uh, we just welcome you to New Beginnings Church. We welcome those that are watching online. We're so happy to be in the house of God today. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You may be seated. God is good. Amen? Amen. Uh, this morning, uh, we just want to remember um, s- some people and some things in prayer. Um, and just remember these um, this week as you are praying. Uh, we, w- again, want to remember Bill Bauer, a friend of ours from uh, Delaware. He's still recovering from surgery. It, w- it was successful, but um, he's still recovering from the surgery and in the hospital. So let's continue to pray for him. Uh, let's continue to pray for Carol De Silva's. Um, she's got some health concerns, and she's undergoing testing. So we, she asked us to continue to pray for her. Um, and also, um, let's pray for our kids and leaders that are going to the Pendel Youth Camp this week. Uh, just pray that God does a mi- mighty work in their hearts and in their lives. Amen? Amen. I know I've, I've talked to a few, and the, our kids are excited, and I'm excited about what God's going to do in their lives. Um, so would you just bow your heads with me as we go to the Lord in prayer over these concerns? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that you are a loving Father. You care about what concerns us, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you, uh, you desire healing. I thank you, Lord, that you, stripes were laid on your back. And your word says that by your stripes we are healed. So, God, right now we lift up Bill Bauer to you. We lift up Carol De Silva's to you, God. And we pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would do a work in their bodies, that the mighty power of God would raise them up for your honor and your glory, raise them up as a testimony of your miracle working power in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. God, we lift up every young person and every youth leader that's going to this Pendel Youth Camp this week, God. I pray, Lord, that you would make their hearts soft to your spirit. I pray, God, that you would use them in a mighty way. God, I pray, Lord, that your word would be planted in their hearts and would not be stolen by the devil. I pray, Lord, that you'd raise them up as young men and young women that love Jesus with all their heart and that they never turn their back on you, not a single day in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Father God, fill them with your spirit and set them on fire to live for you and be a testimony to this world that there's a group of people that love Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in our midst, and we thank you, Father God, for every single person that's here this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would touch every heart and change every life. Make us, Father God, the people that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we have a few announcements here. Uh, This week, uh, Tuesday... Um, from 12 to 1 and 7 to 8, the church is open for prayer. Um, so I encourage you, um, either come out and pray, or if you can't, set aside one of those times to pray so that our church is praying in unity that God's Spirit would be poured out on our church, that God's Spirit would be poured out on, the, on this community and in our nation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to uh, also announce that uh, there's no church tonight. Um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Um, uh, so I want you, we want you guys to be able to spend this day celebrating with your fathers. So uh, go ahead and enjoy the day. And we have a special uh, little something, something for all the fathers as you leave this morning, a special gift. Uh, also, um, uh, if we could put the remind slide up on the screen behind me. Um, this is a, a, a texting app where you don't get uh, bogged down in a group text. In the, the where you would put a phone number, you put 81010, and then you text the message at NBC Fam, and then church announcements that are going on, whether it's in the winter time and there's uh, cancellations, or if there's uh, announcements of, of ways that you can help out of the church, volunteer um, if we need help. Um, those uh, messages will be sent out that way. So I would encourage you, if you have not done this already, take out your phone right now and text, send a text to 81010 and text at NBC Fam. Amen? Amen. 
Also, I wanted to let you know that um, this, for the summer, um, the Flourish Women's Bible Study is taking the summer off, so enjoy your free Saturdays, June, July, and August, and we'll resume in September. Um, I want to talk to you about giving this morning. <clears throat> I want to read you a couple of scripture verses before I talk to you. The first verse is found in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. And as you're turning there, I want to encourage you that every single scripture verse in the Bible was written for you. If you are a child of God, if you've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, if you find a scripture verse in the Bible and you claim it for yourself, you can believe God to do what that scripture verse says in your life. So let's read Proverbs 13. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> um, uh, let's read Proverbs 13, verse 22. It says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. In other words, his grandchildren. And then the second part of the verse says, The wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Another version says, The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. There are some evil people, and you see them prospering, and you're saying, why in the world is God letting them have all that money? And I want you to know that they have all that money because God is allowing them to store it up for you. <laughs> God is a good father. Today's Father's Day. He, if you don't have a father, if your father's passed away, I want you to know the best father that you can have. Even though we've had some really good fathers on this planet, you know, I've had a good father. But the best father you could ever have is God because he's perfect. He, does, he doesn't fail us. You know, I, I know that when our fathers do fail us, they don't mean to. But the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. If you're living a righteous life, you can use this scripture and say, God, I thank you that some of that wealth that's being laid up, it's mine. And it's coming to me. It's, it's coming to me. As I live a godly life, I thank you, Lord, that those blessings are going to come my way. And then if you want to turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 30, we're going to read verses 9 and 10. And even though this verse was written to the children of Israel, the seed of Abraham, if you go to Galatians 3, it says if we are children, if we're blood-bought Christians, the seed of, we become the seed of Abraham. Because Jesus, God went to Abraham and he said that through you, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. What happened with Abraham was Jesus came out of that. And Jesus, because of his death and, and redeeming us from the, the kingdom of sin, has brought us into the kingdom of God. And that means that we are seeds of Abraham. We are the children of Abraham. So all the wealth of Abraham and all the blessings of Abraham, we can claim those as ours. So Deuteronomy 30, verse 9 and 10 says... The Lord your God will make you to abound in all your work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. If, say if, if, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. And if you turn to the Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your soul. Now, all the promises have exceptions. I want to read that, that to you in the NLT version. The Lord, your God, will make you successful in everything you do. Say everything. Say it again. The Lord, <laughs> successful. <laughs> the Lord your God will make you successful in everything you do. He will give you many children and numerous livestock. I'm believing for many children in the faith. I'm believing for people that surrender their hearts and lives to God. And I have a harvest of souls to, to, to show Jesus when, we, when I get to heaven. 
How many people are believing that? Amen. Amen. Numerous livestock. That means you want, you, you'll have cars that work. They use livestock for transportation. You won't have to say, oh, my car broke down. Now what am I going to do? Oh, I'll just drive the other one. Amen? Amen. And he will cause your fields to produce abundant harvests. For the Lord will again delight in being good to you as he was to your ancestors. The Lord will delight in you if you obey his voice and keep the commands and decrees written in this book of instruction. And you turn to the Lord with all your heart and soul. You know what that means? We need to know what this, this word says. Amen. If we're going to keep and obey this, we need to know it. We need to read it. Yeah. But as we know it and we read it and obey it, and we live lives that are pleasing to God, then we can be sure, we can be confident yes. that God is going to not just meet our needs, but God is going to bless you. And he's going to make you a people that the, the, the wicked and the people that are not saved look at your lives and they, they even have to stop and say, those people are blessed by God. Amen? Amen. I want to have a testimony to show this world that I am blessed, that everything that I have is blessed. And when they ask me why I'm blessed, I have a testimony that I have a good God that blesses me. Amen. 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 We're getting ready to give this morning. What, um, I want you to, whether you're giving, uh, we have five different ways to give. Can we put that screen, uh, that slide back up on the screen? Whether you're texting or you're giving um, in the uh, offering receptacle or if you're using Cash App or if you're giving online, um, those ways to give are there. NBCnow.org slash giving for online, NBC Jameson on Cash App, and then there's a, even a phone number for texting to give. Um, and God is going to bless you. We don't give just to be obedient to God. But we also give because the Bible has a promise that's always attached to it. That as we give, God blesses. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are a good, good Father. And you take care of your children. And God, I pray, Lord, as we are... Uh, obedient in this grace of giving as we bring the tithes and the offerings to you. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to pour out a blessing on your people, that they will not have room enough to contain. And God, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to raise each and every one of the people that are obedient to you to be a testimony to this world of the blessings that you pour out on your children. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me as we uh, pray, begin to give? And if you have something to put in the offering receptacle, you can come forward at this time as Alexa continues to lead us in worship. If you would, just lift your hands with me. I don't know if you realize it, but the anointing is already here. The presence of God is already here. And wherever that presence goes, you can just reach out and grab whatever you need. You don't have to wait. It's the same spirit in every single part of the service. So you just connect yourself into that Holy Ghost hotline and start receiving even now. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath 
come from heaven fill our hearts with your life we are here for you we are here for you to you our hearts to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you shout let our shout be your anthem your renown fill the skies we are here for you we are here for you let your word let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. We are here for you.
this one's real easy, I promise. Holy Ghost, your wonderful Holy Ghost, your wind blowing strong. Blowing from heaven. Just lift your hands. Your name is like honey on 
hard to say that you love Jesus and not love the Holy Spirit. That's like telling someone that you love them, but you don't really know any of their personality at all. Because the Holy Spirit is Jesus' spirit. It's the very, just like you have a spirit, that's Jesus' spirit. And so when you say you love Jesus, but you don't know the Holy Ghost, it's like you're missing this whole world.
And the way you get to know the Holy Ghost is you literally just get yourself out of the way. Because it can be so easy because we spend 90% of our lives in our own heads. But when it comes to the things of God, your head is one of your biggest obstacles. So when it comes to getting to know the Holy Ghost, you have to take your thoughts, what you think makes sense, what, how you understand the world to work, because he's a God of the impossible, so if you can understand it, that means it's not God. So you have to get your own head out of the way. I know you went to school. You probably have a degree. You're probably so smart, and I'm happy for you about that. But when it comes to the things of God, it doesn't matter at all. And that's why God, Jesus said, like a little child, you must come. Little kids aren't worried about what makes sense or what doesn't make sense. They just trust and they just release and allow the Father to lead them. So, relax a little bit. You don't have to work it out, nor should you try. It's easy. The things of God are easy. And I think, you know, I tend to be a perfectionist, and that's one of the things the Lord has shown me the most is that it's easy. There's no striving. I don't have to be anybody. I don't have to look any part. You just release. And then he's able to come and do the miraculous. So here's me nicely commanding you. Lift your hands. Come on, you can do it. If you didn't put deodorant on today, that's fine. Just lift your hands. It's not hard. This is the easiest way to surrender. Just lift those hands and begin to say, God, I'm getting out of the way. I am getting out of the way and I am letting you take control today. Ghost, you're wonderful. We welcome you here today. We thank you, Father, for that Holy Spirit that comes and does what we can't in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your Holy Ghost that moves in power. I thank you, Father, right now bodies are being restored. In Jesus' name, pain is leaving. So there you go. Do you feel that? the Holy Ghost. Don't stop. Keep it going. this one real quick. You're going to sing, Holy Ghost, you're my healer. Ready for this one?
Thank you, Jesus. You know, one of the ways we get comfortable with the things of God and the presence of God is, is the more time we spend interacting with it. You may be seated. You know, so many people in, in the church world today, they, they come to church and they're like, oh, worship was too long. And that's because we're not used to spending time in God's presence. We, we, live, in a, we live in a microwave world. Where everything, we, we need it faster, we want it faster, you know, throw it in the microwave, you know, dinner, it took two hours, now you throw it in the microwave and you have it in 10 minutes. May not taste as good, may taste as good, I don't know, but it's just, we're just used to quick. But when it comes to the things of God, we've got to come to a place where we're comfortable just waiting on God. As the children of God, we've got to set the tone. Can I be honest with you? I, I'm a little tired of, of, of hearing from churches, you know, that they need to change the way they do things because they want to be seeker friendly. You know what? When you come to church, this is God's place. It's God's rules. I have never gone to a baseball game, and I love baseball. I have never gone to a Yankee game or a Phillies game and was able to go down and say, hey, listen, guys. I've got a lunch appointment in two hours. Can you speed this thing up for me? You know, don't, don't bother changing pitchers so much. And, and hey, batters, can you stay in the box and not adjust your batting gloves every time a pitch comes in? Can we get this thing over with? Has anybody been, found that to be successful? No. Any event, you go to a movie, you know what, I've got, a place to, I got places to be. Can we skip the 40 minutes of previews and, and, and pre-movie stuff and get right to the movie because I got places? No. And yet we have people come to church and be like, we need to change how we do church because somebody needs to. No, we're not going to do that. This is God's time. Block it out. Block it out. And say, you know what, look, you, you've never been here longer than, than, than three hours. I wasn't going to say longer than two, but I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is God's time. And we, the children of God, got to be comfortable spending time in God's presence. So when somebody else comes in, you know what, they say that's how they do things. Let's never change how we worship God for anybody. Amen. Let's just worship God for who he is. And, 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 and like Alexa said, you know, spending time in, 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 the, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, there's, there's ministry that's taking place there. Some people that, you know, you sing a song and, and they start looking like, all right, are we moving on here or what? When the presence of God is in a place, ministry's taking place. Some of you, you know, you walked in here a little frazzled. Some of you walked in here with, 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 with a bunch of stuff on your mind. And as we spend time in, the, in God's presence, in the presence of his Holy Spirit, when we allow the Spirit to minister, peace can come. Maybe you walked in here and you're like, I need an answer. They that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength, the Bible tells us. But the Bible also says, if we lack wisdom, ask of God who giveth freely. You know what? The Holy Spirit speaks and ministers. So let's just always be okay with God having his timetable and not always putting him on ours. We're going to let the kids go now, head on downstairs. So fifth grade and younger, you guys can head downstairs if you'd like. They've got snacks and they've got other things going on for you guys. If you'd rather stay with mom or dad, that's perfectly fine as well. So make sure you got them all. Yep. One quick announcement that, that was not made, and, and this wasn't Pastor Christie's fault, this was mine. Um, as you know, camp is this week, and we're excited about our kids going to camp. And, and I'm excited about being a part of the body of Christ. Because as we started registering kids for camp, the number kept growing. And the last time we went to camp, I think we took them in our van, um, our eight-passenger van, and, 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 and threw some luggage in another car. But the numbers kept growing, and we went, to, we went past the eight-passenger van. So we started looking for a 15-passenger van to rent. And what I didn't know at the time was there's a shortage of 15-passenger vans available for rental. So a lot of youth groups, a lot of youth pastors are, are finding a hard time renting or they're paying exorbitant fees. Well, we went past the 15-passenger van. So we went up to... 
we went, when we got up to like 20, I'm like, oh man, what are we going to do? And, and, and I reached out to a, to a, to a local church, a, a, a church that we just have a great relationship with, Philadelphia Christian Center. And we reached out to them and they've got a bus that seats 25 and, and takes all the luggage as well. And, and I said it to him, but I'll say it online now. Thank you to Pastor Mendito and the people at Philadelphia Christian Center for allowing us to use their bus this week to get all of our kids and all of the luggage to camp and to bring them home. And, and so we're thankful for, for the body of Christ. Amen. And so if you have any questions about camp, if you're going, see Joshua or Ken or Yulia. They can answer your questions. Friday, when the kids come home from camp, that's a fourth Friday, which means it's normally a paradigm Friday, and we're still meeting Friday night. So get your kid home, give him a little nap, and then get him back here. We're going to have food for him. We're going to have outdoor games and activities. We're going to have, um, the, um, I talked with a couple of our leaders, we're going to be tie-dyeing stuff. So if you're, you know, come ready to get a little messy, but if you've got stuff you want to tie-dye, socks, t-shirts, um, whatever it is, bring it. We're going to have the tie-dye stuff here. Uh, what's the other thing we were going to do? Uh, bleaching. So if you've got dark clothing that you want to do the opposite, where we're going to have water bottles with bleach and water in them, you squirt them and it makes designs, um, we're going to have that as an option as well. But you bring the stuff you want to bleach or tie-dye, We'll provide all the stuff. We'll provide all the food. We're going to have a great evening that night. It starts at 7 p.m. And, and, and some people are like, yeah, but they just got home from camp. They're tired. Do you remember being like 14? <laughs> like, it's like, I remember before, I was like, what's next? Where are we going next? What's next to do? I didn't want to sit home. And so, you know, they're, they're young and they're full of energy. One day they'll be 60 and they'll have an excuse, but not yet. So get them here. Again, we'll get home from camp somewhere around 1 o'clock. Get them home, feed them, give them a nap, and just bring them back here. And, uh, and we're going to have a great time Friday night. Um, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to, to all the guys out there, all the men. Uh, some of you are fathers. Some of you are going to be fathers. Um, some of you, you know what? You may not have your own biological children, but what I found is that so often God brings people in our lives that he allows us to, to mentor them or parent them. So maybe you're a father to someone who wasn't your biological kid, but you've invested in a life in one way, shape, or form. Maybe as a coach, maybe as a teacher. Uh, so to all the guys today, we say, um, glad you're here today. And after church today, we've got something special for you. Remember for the ladies, we had sweets. For the guys, we've got savory. Uh, and so, so Ben and his family, they made over a hundred empanadas, which are meat, Puerto Rican meat patties. Um, there's over a hundred of them. If there's leftovers, we'll let the ladies try some. Um, only if there's leftovers. Don't say, oh no, because I saw you sneak one of the sweets last time for the ladies. So I saw that. I didn't, I didn't make a big deal, but I saw it. So... <laughs> So for all the guys as you leave today, we've got those. Uh, ben, what flavors or what variety? So I don't care what your thing is. We've got it for you. And then we've got some ice cold drinks. We've got root beer. We've got birch beer. We've got cream soda. We've got wild cherry. We've got orange creamsicle soda. Um, so it's just a time, guys, just a little something to say. Thanks for being a great man of God. And you say, well, I'm not a great man of God. Shh, don't tell anybody. You can still have one. Uh, but we're just glad you're here today. And, and again, we just want you to hang out and, and, and also fellowship a little. We talked about this yesterday at our men's breakfast, how important it is for the, church, for the men in the church to continue to develop and strengthen relationships. The devil wants to separate. The devil wants to cause division. The devil wants to keep us weak. And God wants us to be strong. And one of the things that strengthens us is fellowship and communion. Communion, not the, the stuff we do once a month here, but interacting one with another. So take a few minutes today, stick around, and, and join us for that. So anyway, some of you are looking up me and you're saying, what is he wearing at church today? I thought he was a Yankee fan. Um, I am a Yankee fan. But this was, this was one of my favorite gifts I ever received from my kids. And I figure on Father's Day, I get a pass to wear something my kids gave me. And so it is a Pirates jersey. I know they're horrible. They're a terrible team. They're miserable. But I wear it because of the player it represents. And so um, 
One of my favorite ball players of all time, Roberto Clemente. That's why I wore it, not because I'm switching allegiances uh, to a Pennsylvania team. But anyway, throughout history, the kids are gone, right? Okay. Throughout history, there have been all kinds of fathers depicted in TVs and movies. Some of them are like, like stand-up kind of guys. Like how many remember shows like uh, Leave it to Beaver? Remember dad, you know, dad, dad kind of had the answers to everything. And, and there was even a show, I, I, don't, I don't even know if they could remake this one today, Father Knows Best. Remember that one? And so there were shows where the, sh the fathers were cast in a good light. Not that the mothers were in a bad light, that the dads were cast in an especially good light. You fast forward, and over time, dads became dumber. Right? They were always the, the third child in the family, the fourth child in the family, the, the biggest troublemaker in the family. And, and we see that in TVs and in movies. There's been, there's been good dads and bad dads, lazy dads and hardworking dads, smart ones and dumb ones. Uh, but there was one father in particular in a movie that blew my mind. See, as a kid, one of the things my dad and I would do from time to time is go to movies. You know, my mom and my sister, they'd go, the, they, they'd go do their thing. And my dad would say, come on, we're going to a movie. And so we'd go to the movies together. And we, we saw some great movies together growing up. Rocky. Who remembers Rocky? Some of you remember Rocky like 80. I think that's the number we're on now, right? Like Rocky number 80. I remember the original. We went and saw Rocky. We went and saw the original Superman. We went and saw Raiders of the Lost Ark. Classics. And, and, and the always classic, Matilda the Boxing Kangaroo. How many remember that one? Nobody? <laughs> really? Nobody? <laughs> Who? Who raised a hand? Where? Somebody? You remember Matilda? Wow. Matilda the Boxing Kangaroo. But there was one movie... And a scene between a father and a son, because it is Father's Day, that rocked my world at a young age. And it all started with a little movie that came out in 1977. I don't remember the day or the date that we went to see it. But what, ha what, what I remember was we hopped in the car and, and I double checked with my dad to make sure I was telling the truth this morning. And, and, and he took me, we lived in Brooklyn at the time, and he drove me to Midtown Manhattan. It was a big deal to go watch this new release. And can I tell you, from the first moments of that movie, I was hooked. From the music. Not, not like you have today. This was like when, when movies had like really good scores. The music. The classic opening scene. The heroes, the villains. Everything about it was beyond, at that point, my six-year-old expectations. I was completely blown away. Maybe it had something to do with that. Back then... If you watched a movie at home, it was probably on a TV screen uh, that wasn't that big. There wasn't surround sound. There was only a couple of channels. So a movie was a treat. Nowadays, you tell a kid, let's go to a movie, and they're like, why? I have a friend who just built a home theater for his kids. He's got, I think, I think, it's, I think it's a 90 or 100-inch screen in his basement with movies, better than movie seats, Everyone in the family has their own recliner. There's a refrigerator and a popcorn machine. This is all in his basement. So for a kid nowadays, it's like, eh, take it or leave it. But back then, to go to a theater and see this on the big screen and in, 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 in surround sound, just amazing. In case you're wondering, in case you haven't figured out yet, that movie was Star Wars. The year was 1977. Six-year-old little me going to, to see this movie. And, and when we walked out of that theater, like any self-respecting kid, I had to have the toys. I need, so, so if you ever look at your kids and say, when back when I was your age, I can't say that to my kids. Because back when I was their age, I wanted the toy that went with the movie. So I got a land speeder with Luke Skywalker in it. And, and, and being named Ben as I am, I had to have a Ben Kenobi action figure. Had to have it. He's named after me, Dad. How could you not buy this for me? And, and, and by the way, they weren't dolls. They were action figures. Okay? Because Luke and Ben, they had in their arm a hole. And there was a little knob that you would slide up and out would slide a lightsaber. 
So they were action figures. Let's get that straight. And the other must-have was a Darth Vader. Had to have Darth Vader. I mean, after all, how could you play Star Wars and save the universe at home if you didn't have the, de the villain to defeat over and over and over again? For those of you that are a little younger, maybe you're not into Star Wars, think Toy Story. Think Buzz Lightyear. Think Zerg. It's the same thing, basically. Side note, I still have a lot of those toys. Matter of fact, um, they're in a bin in my house right now, but they're not worth that much because some people are like, wow, Star Wars figures from the 70s, that's a lot of money. Not really because I played with them a lot, and then I passed them on to my boys to be played with, and so, so though we still have them, uh, they're probably not worth much as far as resale value, but man, they mean a lot to me and to, to my kids, and eventually they're going to go to my grandkids, and so that's kind of a neat thing. But anyway, back to the story. I should mention real quick that there is a spoiler alert coming, Okay. But if you haven't seen the movie, you've had over 40 years to do it, so I'm not being too apologetic about the spoiler alert. If it really is an issue, if you're like, oh, I want to see that, stick your fingers in your ears for the next couple of moments, okay? So the movie ends, obviously, with good winning over evil. And Darth Vader defeated. And then, surprise, a sequel. Another movie was coming out. I was like so excited to go to the sequel. The Empire Strikes Back. Oh, they tried to defeat Luke and his friends once before, and they couldn't do it. And so what? They're going to try it again? We all know how this is going to end. They're going to lose again because they're the bad guys. But something happens in that sequel that was this earth-shattering. A classic line. By this point, I think I was, I think I might have been nine when the second movie came out. So a couple years of waiting, anticipation. And a classic line was spoken that is repeated over and over through the years. And that line, in, in Darth Vader, the, the, the villain, in a climactic conversation with Luke Skywalker, the hero of the story, says this classic line, Luke, I am. Hey, I am. <laughs> I am. No. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. I forgot to warn them. He says, Luke, I am your father. I almost fainted. I'm like, wait a minute. How is this possible? How can Darth Vader, the most evil man in all of the universe, be the father of Luke Skywalker, the hope of all of the universe. This cannot be. It can't be true. He's the bad guy, the villain. You can't just one day wake up and say, I'm your father. It's not allowed. But here's the thing. How many know, how many know the line I'm talking about? How many remember? And you've heard, it's become a part of pop culture. I think it even shows up in Toy Story, um, that scene. Am I correct, Joshua? Okay, Joshua's my uh, expert on all things sci-fi and cartoon. But here's the reality. Many people will repeat that line. Many people remember that line in the movie. It never happened. You're like, what? That line, Luke, I am your father, is not in the movie. It's something we've made up over the years and all of a sudden everybody just jumps in and says, yeah, that's the line. No, the line actually is. The real line is, there's a conversation, he just says, no, I am your father. Not a big difference, but if I were to get 100 people and say, hey, do you remember this line from the movie? 100 people say, yes, that's the line, and they'd be wrong. It's not the line. The line is, no, I am your father. A classic line from a classic movie that most people get wrong and will even argue when, even though they're wrong. And, you know, this got me thinking about, about fathers in general and especially about our Heavenly Father. See, just like many people don't get the movie line right, and there's other movies that have lines like that, they also don't have a proper picture of, of what a good father is because they've started to believe something that the culture has created that isn't true and isn't, re isn't the reality of what, God, of what God's word says he is as a father. 
We don't have a proper picture. See, a good father is... Uh, they don't have a good picture, excuse me, of a wood, what a good father is, and therefore they have a wrong idea of what God is like. See, that little line in the movie, Luke, I am your father, isn't the right line. And there's so many other little lines like that that have been talked about who God is that people are believing a wrong notion of who God our father really is. And so as we're going through this series, Hello, I Am, today we're going to talk about Hello, I Am, Your Father. I want us to walk out of here, men and women alike, with a better and a clearer understanding of what it means that God is our Father. He's not Santa Claus, first of all, okay? Some people think God is Santa Claus. Some people think God is a personal assistant. Some people think God is an evil taskmaster. Some people think God is, is sitting up somewhere, lightning bolt in hand, ready to throw that thing the first minute you step out of line. Some people think God is a buffoon, that they can live and do whatever they want with their life, and, and th 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 there's no consequences. But the Bible I read says that none of those things I just mentioned describe who God is. But we're going to talk about this morning who he is, because I want you to walk out of here knowing the truth, not some made up cultural or, or pop culture notion of who God is. First of all, God is our heavenly father, father, heavenly father. Why the big deal on that? Because in our culture today, there's trying to be a change made where he's not viewed as a heavenly father. He's a, he's a, he's a force. He's a power. He's gender neutral. He, he's, he's, he's a heavenly father. End of story. We've got to understand that. He is our heavenly father. And so again, this morning, we're going to take a few moments here, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on that point, but I just want us to be on the same page. I want you to know where this pastor and this church is coming from when we talk about who God is. He's God the Father, Abba, Daddy. Some of you probably came into church today like, oh, it's Father's Day. Get ready for the Father medley. We're going to sing Good, Good Father. We're going to sing all the Father songs. So thank you, Alexa, for, for steering clear of that and, 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 and leading us in a little bit different direction. It was great. Thank you so much. Glad to have you home. Um, but again, we're going to talk about who he is, the Heavenly Father, and, and we're going to talk a little bit that, that by nature of being his children, what kind of people we should be. Because at the end of the day, a father who's doing things correctly should have an influence on his children and his grandchildren and beyond on how they live, how they talk, how they act. Think about your own family. A lot of the things you may do is because of how your father did them or how your grandfather did them. There's an influence that is there. And I want us, if you're here today and you're a child of God, I want you to understand that his nature should be reflected in your actions. You can't just read the Bible and say he's this and then say I'm a child of God and not act like your father does. There should be a resemblance. There should be things that people easily look at and say, yep, he belongs to that family. You've got it in your own natural families. How many of you, and I think I've asked this before, how many people open presents on Christmas morning? Raise your hand. How many people open them on Christmas Eve? How many do both? Okay. Part of that is based on something in your, some, something in your history established some sort of a pattern in your family. And so by nature, again, of being his children, we should also recognize who he is so we recognize what we, should, what we should be, how we should look, how we should act, how we should talk. So one of the first things I want us to understand about God is God is not some, some separated entity sitting up somewhere on a throne, looking down, not really involved in our lives. That is not who he is. Bible tells me that he is, he's a loving God. John 3, 16, 
We know the verse. I'm starting with it because it's a good place to start. We can all kind of agree on something. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. The first thing I want us to know about God is God's love is sacrificial. It's sacrificial. You know, we've been, we've been having a lot of talk, you know, in, in our home and, and, and some of the guys at the men's breakfast yesterday. You know, we've been talking about, some, about this notion of, of, of giving and serving. God gave first. God reached out first. Why? Because he loves us. And so when you think about God, you know, some people go, oh, you come to church and all the church wants, and therefore all God wants is your money. God doesn't want your money. God wants you. He loves you. He didn't send his son to the cross for your 401k or for your checking account. He sent his son to die on the cross so that you could have forgiveness for your sins and have the hope and promise of eternity in heaven with him. That's what God loves. That's what God loves. Well, Pastor Ben, we know that, but there's a lot of people that don't, and we're the voice who needs to tell the world this is who God is. You know, you guys know my parents. They moved here in the last year. So now they're here to check if I say anything about them that's out of line. They can call me out. Before that, though, I could have said anything. And you wouldn't know. You would not know. Is he telling the truth? You know, as, as a kid, you know, growing up, you know, my parents kept me in a box under the bed. Uh, they, they fed me once a week, whatever was left over, you know, from the mousetrap. And, uh, and when it was time for a haircut, my dad would make me just lay on the lawn while he cut it. And, you know, I could say all kinds of stuff. And, and, and you would walk away and you'd be like, oh, my goodness. What a childhood. How did he survive that? What a terrible parent. What a horrible father he had. Here's the thing. As the church, we've got to start talking about God for who he really is so that the people who don't know him yet don't have a messed up picture of who our father is. Talk him up for the good God that he is. Talk him up for the loving God that he is. I don't know about you, but I know this about me. While I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. That's love. That's love. He didn't say, I didn't get a letter in the mail and say, hey, Ben, nice to see you in church last week. By the way, uh, love to have you in a relationship with you and welcome you to the family. But first, you need to clean up these five areas. Never got a letter like that. My experience is John 3, 16, that that God loved me so much that he gave his only son, that if I only would believe in him, I would not perish but have the hope of eternal life. That's my experience because he's a good father. His love is sacrificial. He loved us so much that, again, he gave the only one he had. The only one. The only one. We live in a world where people are used to giving the leftovers. We live in a world where people are used to giving what they're not using anymore. My, 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 my kids and, and me and my wife, we love to go to thrift shops. You can look down on me if you want, but I don't care. I found some amazing things at thrift shops for a fraction of the price. So if you like paying full price, God bless you. But I love going to thrift shops, and we find, you know, you find that little treasure. But usually it's something that someone, you know, had, didn't want anymore, and donated. And if you've ever gone thrifting, there's a special little thrill that hits your heart when you find something that still has the original tags on it. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah, see, you know, good, 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 good. I'm not alone here. But you find that thing, you're like, this is brand new. And it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it, it's new. We're taking it because <laughs> it's new. There's a different feeling. Listen, God gave us the new, the best, not the leftovers. That's how much he loves us. 
He did this to give us new life and that so we could spend eternity with him. That is true sacrificial and unconditional love. That's my father. That's my father. That's the father I want to introduce people to. That's the father I want you to introduce people to. My God loves me so much that he sent the very best he had for me. No leftovers. Imagine if you, know, if you go to someone's house and, and they say, hey, I want you to come over for dinner. And then, and, then, and then all of a sudden they start pulling Tupperware out of the fridge. You know, that's not the worst thing, okay? It's not the worst thing. But, you know, they start pulling Tupperware out. You're like, oh, it's left overnight. As opposed to if you show up at someone's house and they're like, oh, I just picked up this filet mignon, just got it from the store, these fresh lobsters. And you're like, wow, that's, you look at it in a different level. We've got to see God for who he is, a loving God who's sacrificial in his love. He gave the best that he had. That's my father. That's your father. That's the father we need to let the world know exists. Not this God who's just looking to be me. Oh, your God is narrow-minded. When they say you're narrow-minded, you know what they're saying? Your God is narrow-minded. When they say you're a bigot as a child of God who's following his word, you know what they're saying? Your God's a bigot. Because we're just obeying what his word says when we stand up for truth in the world that we live in. So there are rules, but he's loving. Introduce him, them, to this loving God. Second thing, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. As our father, we need to understand and recognize that, that, that he's our father, but he also calls us his children. See, it, it works both ways, and that doesn't always happen in society. There's a lot of kids running around today who know who their father is, but the father has denied them as their child. We've seen that. It's, it, and, and, and you know what? Not just picking on dads. It's happened with moms, too. Moms who have walked out on children. That's not my kid. I'm, I don't want to deal with them. They're not raising them. But God says not only is he our father, he says, you're my child. You're my child. 1 John 3, 1 says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us. You know what the word lavish means? Lavish, when you lavish something on someone, you give it out in abundance. There's an overflow of it. When I think about the word lavish, you know, I, 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 I picture almost like, like a, a little kid sitting in a, in, in a kiddie pool, and you, you, if, you, if you're new here, Bear with me. If you're not new here, you know sometimes the visual pictures I get. But I picture a little kid sitting in a kiddie pool, and he says to his, 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 his parent, he says, I want some ice cream. And a good parent would go, here's some ice cream. Lavish is like Nickelodeon getting slimed. Lavish is all of a sudden a rope is pulled and just ice cream comes down from heaven and fills that tub. And then they give the kid a spoon. That's lavish. Maybe another picture for, for you, you Willy Wonka fans. Lavish is Augustus saying he loves chocolate and doesn't just get a chocolate bar, but he realizes in front of him is a chocolate river. And he runs over and lays down on his belly and just begins shoveling handfuls of liquid chocolate into his mouth. There's no end to it. That's lavish. How great the love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. I want you to walk out of here today. This Father said, look, I don't, Pastor Christie said it earlier, I don't know what your father was like. Maybe you don't even know your father. Maybe you had a great father. Maybe you had a lousy father. I don't know about that today. I'm not here today to defend your father. I'm here to talk about our father. Our father who's seated on a throne in heaven. And that father loves you so much that he has lavished his love upon you. That we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. If you're walking around depressed, it's Father's Day. Oh, my dad didn't. I want you to know there's a father who loves you more than you can ever dream or imagine. I want you to know that there's, you have a father in heaven who gave his very, the very best he had in his son Jesus so that you might have forgiveness for your sins. That's the father that we have, and that's the father we need to talk about with the world around us. And not just with the world around us, we need to talk about that with each other. 
God loves me. God lavishes love upon me. God calls me his child. In the last couple of weeks, I don't know why. Well, I do know why, but how many of you know on social media, if you watch like something, all of a sudden your feed just starts filling up with similar things? So I watched a video. Um, quick question. You guys cold? Anybody cold? Yeah. Click it down. Somebody back there, Joshua. Just do it one click. Warmer. If you're still cold after that, bring a sweater. Because <laughs> I'm sweating. Let me see. Yeah, look at that. My Apple Watch says I'm almost done with my exercise for the day. <laughs> anyway, where was I? The videos. Thank you. Glad you're home. Um, but anyway, so I, I watched a video, and the video was about this, 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 this adopted family. The, 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 the father was the stepfather to the girl, and, and, and she was turning 18, and for her 18th birthday, she gave her father a gift. And the gift she gave her father was basically, since you have loved me all these years, I want to be officially adopted and have you as my dad, and I want to take your last name as my last name. What a powerful picture there of, 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 of the relationship that God wants to have with us. This father in that video, now like I said, now I get a bunch of those, and I can't watch them all because I just start crying. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. Um, but in this video, for years, the father had loved this girl in such a way that she said, I want you to be my dad. And God, I want you to know before you even knew anything about God, God loved you in such a way that he sent Jesus to die for you. And he's saying, look, I want you to be my child. I want you to surrender your life to me. Can I just say that the first time I held my kids in my, in my, in my hands, I knew there was nothing I would not do for them. The first time, didn't know them, didn't know their personality didn't know what the years ahead would bring. But the first time that, that baby was taken and placed in my arms, and Benjamin being the first, but it happened with every single kid, I knew that, 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 that in the years to come, there's nothing I wouldn't do for my kids. And if you're a parent, I, you, I, you understand that. And I want you to know that God feels the same way about us. The same way about us. Matthew chapter 18, verse 12 to 14 says this. This is the kind of father we have. Again, the world, many people in the world have a messed up picture of who God is because of the father figure they may have had in their life. And I'm sorry if you had a bad father figure or maybe no father figure. I'm sorry for that. But don't let that rob you of the relationship with God the father that he wants to have with you. And this is, again, a picture of, of who he is, his character. Matthew chapter 18, verse 12 to 14. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Our Heavenly Father loves us, loves you, as if you were the only one on the planet. The only one. Sometimes when I'm feeling a little bit down about, my, about God, like, God, really, where are you? You ever feel that way? Can I just be honest? As a pastor, I feel that way sometimes. Like, God, where are you? God, have you forgotten me? Hello, God, I'm here. I feel that way sometimes. And then I remember that I heard this before, that even if I was the only one, God would have sent Jesus. And boy, does that snap me out of that real quick. Does that snap me out of that little pity party real quick? Of course God knows who I am. He sent Jesus for me. Of course God knows what I'm going through. He gave his son that I might have a restored relationship with him as my father and I might, and I might be his child. The same way I care about my kids, he cares about me and to an even greater degree. 
That's a hard concept to grasp, but it's one we have to get a hold of in the church first. First in the church. So when people come in, we say, can I tell you about my father? Really, your, your father? Well, not my earthly. Can I tell you about my father in heaven? He's your father too. He loves me and he loves you. He has a plan for me and he has a plan for you. He cares about everything that happens to me and he cares about everything that happens to you. He loved me so much that he sent his son to die on a cross to forgive me of my sins. And you know what? He did the same thing for you. That's the message that we have to be teaching and proclaiming and speaking over and over and over. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11 to 12. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11 to 12 says this about our Father in heaven. Which one of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? I have a good Father who gives good things. Say, I'm going to say it again. I have a good Father who loves me and gives good things. Say it again. I have a good Father who loves me and gives good things. If it's evil, it's not from God. If it brings death, it's not from God. If it brings destruction, it's not from God. God gives good gifts. It's in his nature. It's who he is. Believe it. Believe it. Oh, God's letting me suffer. We're not Job. Job had his own issues that he was dealing with. We're under a new covenant. We're under a covenant that says God loved me so much he gave his only begotten son. And God doesn't put me through hell. He delivered me from it. Amen. And so stop talking. God did this. and God, Cancer is not from God. Amen. Sickness is not from God. Depression is not from God. Disease is not from God. God brings deliverance from those things. Amen. Elijah. Elijah was depressed and he was a prophet of God. That God didn't make him depressed. Elijah got depressed because of himself. His own issues. But when he was depressed, God brought something to bring him out of that. He sent ravens to feed him. He caused a, a tree to grow up overnight to provide him shade. And then God reminded him, oh, and by the way, Elijah, you're not alone. Because Elijah was like, poor me, I'm the only one left. There's no other prophets of God. I'm it. God said, no, you're not. There's more. There's more. And, 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 and to get you ready to get up and get on your way, here's some food, here's some drink, here's some shade, because my God gives good gifts. My God gives good gifts. Well, I asked God for something, and I didn't get it. We're going to get to that in a moment. My God, though, gives good gifts. Our Heavenly Father is so good to us. He loves us. He is for us and not against us. And he will give us the desires of our heart as we delight in him. See, some people, it's like, well, I want this, and God didn't give it, and so God's mean. <laughs> Can I tell you how many times I wanted things and my parents didn't give it to me? It didn't mean they were mean. It just meant they had an understanding maybe I didn't have. It meant that they recognized some things I didn't recognize. You know, if I went to my parents, you know, and I was like, hey, mom and dad, you know, I'd love a pet bear. My dad might have said, sure. <laughs> I don't know. My mom would have been like, no way. That's not, a good pet. That's not a good pet for a kid, necessarily. If you have a pet bear, it works for you. God bless. In this day and age, I've learned you got to be careful because someone will walk out and pastor says bears are bad pets. I'm never going back to that church. If you have a pet bear, good. Enjoy it. But he, he, we don't always get the desires of our hearts because maybe that's not the thing we need. Well, well, how do I know what I need? Get in tune with him. A little bit about what Alexa talked about this morning, letting the Holy Spirit 
minister in us and through us and to us. And, our, and what happens is when we learn to delight in him, we're transformed, the Bible tells us, by the renewing of our mind. And when our minds are renewed, that's when we begin to understand his good and perfect will. When we start to understand his good and perfect will, it changes how we think. It'll change how we pray. And we'll find that we're going to start praying prayers that we're going to get answers to because we're praying in line with God's will, which is his word, and his word, which is his will. And we won't be so frustrated anymore some of the reasons some of us are frustrated we're just young and we're still learning but as we get to know him we know he gives good gifts who asks for your child asks for a bread who will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish we'll give him a snake reading that verse again if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your, will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And again, I said before, he's not Santa Claus. It's just like, I want, I want, I want, I want. But it becomes a question of, God, I know your heart. And as I pray in, in agreement with what your heart and your desire is, God, my prayers are going to be fulfilled. He's a good God who gives good gifts. Here's a great thing about God. He knows before we ask. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Some of us have to grow up a little, and our prayer life has to advance beyond just repeating the same thing over and over. I want, I want, I want, I want, gimme, gimme, gimme. How many of you that have kids find it endearing and, and love it when you're having a conversation with someone and your kids, whether it's now or when they were little, come up to you and like, mom, 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 mom. Anybody enjoy that? You do? Oh, you enjoy because they're saying mom. If they said dad, 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 it might be a different story. And sometimes that's literally what our prayers are like. We're just like, God, 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 God. We're just babbling on. And there comes a point where we say, you know what? I told them they know and that's it. God knows. He heard it. And I'm going to start thanking him for, for how he's going to move in that situation. You know, that property over there, many of you know, it's still in litigation. God told me, stop praying for, for the way you've been praying and just start saying, God, I thank you for what it, the outcome that you're working on. God, I thank you for that outcome. Because you know what? I don't know. I, I'm not smart enough legally to know what I should be praying in that air in that way sometimes I, I just don't know so I, I prayed God you know what you know the deal you know the situation and so God I'm just going to put my trust in you and I'm going to thank you God that that whatever happens ministry is not going to be hindered my life is not going to be negatively effective we're going to do what we've been called to do you're working on that and I thank you that it's in your hands Start praying different prayers. Some of you are praying the same thing for the last 40 years. And I'm not saying like, you stop praying for it, but at some point you start saying, God, you heard me. And your word says, and I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. He knows before we ask. A common thing we always see in people is, is, is people say, I don't, again, I don't know how to pray. Pray God's word. Get to know God's word and pray God's word because he cares about what you're praying. Pray prayers of supplication, but also pray prayers of thanksgiving. When was the last time you spent more time thanking God than pleading with God? When was the last time you spent more time saying, thanks, God, than I need God? I'm not saying you stop asking. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. But let's also make sure we're incorporating into that thanksgiving. God, thank you for keeping your word, doing what you said you would do. God loves us. And one of the, one, and one of the ways we know he loves us is because he's given us his spirit. It says in John 14, 15 to 17, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. You know, God loves us so much that he didn't just say, hey, I sent Jesus. He said, hey, here's Jesus, and here's the Holy Spirit as well. 
Because if you read the story of Jesus, the Bible tells us that after Jesus rose from the dead and he spent some time walking on the earth and interacting with people, there came a day when he finally ascended into heaven. And the Bible tells us he's seated at the right hand of the Father and waiting until that day when it's time to come back for his church. He's getting ready for that day. He's waiting for that day. He's giving the church a chance to do what the church is supposed to do. Proclaim the gospel and get itself ready. Because he's coming back for a, a bride that is spotless and without wrinkle. He's coming back for a bride that's ready to get married. Could you imagine if, if, the, if on your wedding day you woke up at 8 a.m. and somebody ran, ladies, somebody ran into your room and they said, hey, there's been some issues. The time of the wedding has been moved up. You're getting married in 10 minutes. Many, some of you would be like, cool. But many women would be like, that's not enough time. I've got to get ready. I've got to do some things. Brush my teeth, comb my hair. Maybe there's a dress you had picked out. Maybe there's a way you wanted your makeup or your hair done. You say, I'm not ready. God's giving us time to get ready because we're his bride. We're his bride. And he's saying, get yourselves ready for the wedding. And the way we get ourselves ready is we need to start getting rid of the junk and the garbage that doesn't line up with his word. The church, man, Jesus, if Jesus came back now, some of us would not look too pretty. Some of us would not look like the picture of a bride on her wedding day. Some of us would look like we went 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. And that's God's coming for a bride that is without spot or without wrinkle. God is coming for a bride that's ready. And he's given us his Holy Spirit to get us ready. Amen. To get us ready. Amen. To get us ready. So again, going back to that picture, if they said, hey, listen, you've got to be ready in 30 minutes. They gave you a little more time, 30 minutes. But we have got for you, we have got a hairstylist here, and we've got a makeup artist here, and we've got someone who's going to do your nails while your makeup's getting done, and someone who's going to fix your hair while your toes are getting painted. We've got a team ready, and you'd be like, okay, this is possible. The Holy Spirit is what God has given us to get us ready. It's what he's given us to get us ready. Some of you are trying, I can't do this. Don't work and, and make effort to do it on your own. Let the Holy Spirit that God has given us work in you to get you ready. Some of you, I've been trying to kick smoking for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. The Holy Spirit can get you off nicotine and cigarettes today. Amen. Today. I've been dealing with this for this long. I've been dealing with that for that long. I can't figure it out anymore. I've done the patch, the shot, the this, the that. I had them sew my lips shut. I've tried it all. I don't know what else to do. God says the Holy Spirit comes to empower us Amen. to be ready as a bride without spot or without wrinkle. And that's the message, not just for us, but for the world around us. We keep telling people, it's okay, God understands. It's okay, God understands. God does understand. God is gracious. God is merciful. But at some point, change needs to take place. Right. If, I, if I met a girl, you know, back in the day before I met Pastor Christy, if I had met a girl and she's like, you know, she's dating four other guys, I'd be like, um, thanks, but no thanks. Get rid of them first. Get rid of that first. Then we can talk. God doesn't tell us we got to get rid of stuff first, but God says now that we become a part of the body of Christ, we got to start getting rid of stuff. Get rid of, rid of the sin and the thing that so easily beset us and hold us back, and the Holy Spirit helps us do that. When we get saved, we get a measure of the Holy Ghost. And then God says, though, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, 8, and, ch and chapter 2, verse 4, he talks about how the, in the, the, the Spirit of, of God fell on the people, and they were filled. It says they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, different than what took place at salvation. Salvation, you get, a, you get, you get the Spirit, but then it talks about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And every, word, every time in the Bible that that word baptism is used, the same word baptizo that's used in the book of Acts is also used when they talk about water baptism. It's talking about full immersion in whatever the element is. In water baptism, it's baptism in water. It means full immersion. That's why we don't sprinkle people. 
That's why we get a big old feeding trough up here and we sit you in it and we dunk you all the way down and into the thing because we're saying you need to be totally immersed. You need to die to self, be buried and come back a new creation. It's the same thing in the, with the Holy Spirit. We don't need to walk with just a little bit. He says be baptized, be immersed in, be overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit and you will have victory over the things in your life that you thought were impossible to have victory over. Not only does he give us the victory, but he guides us. He guides us through scripture. He illuminates scripture to us. He gives us the wisdom that we need. Listen, when I had my kids... They didn't give me a book. They didn't say, oh, first time dad, here's the book, 1,001 Ways to Be the Best Dad in the World. They didn't give me that book. I said this before. They said, do you have a car seat? Yes. Was that the only question they asked back then? Yes, we have a car seat. Okay, bring it with you when you pick up the baby. Brought the car seat, put the baby in the car seat, walked out. They let me take the kid home. They had no clue if I had a clue. They just said, here you go. And I thought, maybe it's a fluke. And then they did it the second time. (laughs) Then they did it the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. I'm like, okay, there's no book. But there is a book. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. You want to know how to raise kids? Get in the Word of God. You want to know how to apply that to to raising your kids? The Holy Spirit helps us to understand that. He gives us His Spirit to help us live the life that we're called to live. Why? Because he loves us. And I want to close with that. If you remember nothing else from today, and I say that, but I, deep inside I'm like, I hope they remember more than that. <laughs> but if you remember nothing else about today, remember this. Our Heavenly Father loves you. He loves you. When no one else seems to care, he loves you. When nothing else seems to be working on your behalf, he is because he loves you. When you feel like everything you set your hand to just, just blows up in your face, know that he's got a plan and a purpose for your life because he loves you. And maybe it's not that it's, maybe it's not that, it, maybe it's not you. Maybe it's just that you're following a wrong path. You know, you mix the wrong chemicals in, in, in chemistry class, you're going to have a bad reaction. It's not the chemicals reactions. You didn't do something right. And sometimes we try to do things on our own and they don't go right. And we're like, you know, God, thanks. And God's like, that wasn't me. <laughs> I had nothing to do with that. If you'd listen to me, I'd give you the directions that you're looking for. And when I give you the directions, if you follow them, you'll get to the place I want you to be that's for good and not for evil, for your benefit and for my glory. God loves us. And and as I close this morning, this this Father's Day, your memories of your father may be different than the, person's next, the person next to you's memories of their father. But whatever those are, remember that they are not indicative of your heavenly father, no matter how good or how bad they were. I had a good father. I have a good father, a good heavenly father. I'm thankful for my heavenly father. But as good as my, 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 excuse, my earthly father is, my heavenly father is something else. And I'm not knocking my father. I just know he's better than anything that any human being could ever be. I know he's capable of more than any human being could ever be capable of. So again, as you think this Father's Day about what that may or may not mean to you, maybe for some of you it's just, it's just another day. I don't want to remember Father's Day because my father was a, was a bum. Start thinking of Father's Day in, char- in, in terms of your heavenly father and how blessed you are, how blessed I am to be loved, to be cared for, that he gives good gifts. We have a heavenly father, again, who loves us, cares about us, will never leave us, will never forsake us, but with that he'll also correct you. 
I don't want everybody to walk out and be like, oh, it's all great, and I can do whatever. No, he also will correct when we need it. Why? Because he loves us. When I was a little kid, I was made to wear a harness walking through the streets of Brooklyn. (laughs) Sad moments. Why? Because my mother didn't love me? No, because she did, and I had a, a habit of ripping my hand out of hers and running into traffic. And so because they loved me, I had one of those. Nowadays, they make them cute. It looks like a backpack with a little... Then it was a straight up, like, you know, walk the dog. (laughs) It wasn't to be mean. Some of you like, that was mean. No, it, it wasn't to be mean. It was to protect me from me, from my habit of running out in the traffic. And we lived in a very busy area growing up in Brooklyn, very busy street. Police station, liquor store, bar, and bodega. That was the four corners of the block I grew up on in Brooklyn. <laughs> it's a busy neighborhood. So that was for lo- that was because she loved me. And God loves us. And sometimes when God loves us, he will put restraints on us. Don't think it's because he doesn't like you. It's because he really cares about you. And he wants to protect you and keep you safe so that you might fulfill all that God has for you. You know, my mom could have been one of those. I, I, there were people, well, kid, how do you do that to your son? She could have listened to those voices, and then one day I could have pulled my hand out, run in front of a bus, and been done. But because of what she did out of love, I stand before you today fulfilling everything God has for me in my life. That's love. That's love. So if you're in a place of, of correction, God loves you, even in correction. He never forgets you. Don't let poor models of what a father is keep you from having a relationship with your heavenly father. As we close this morning, I want to ask you to stand to your feet as we're going to close here. And again, it's, it's, it's a little early. It's, it's only a quarter till, and besides, we have food for you. I want to ask a couple of questions this morning as we close. Whether you're in this room or watching online via Facebook or YouTube, As you stand here today, as you're, as you're listening to, my, to the sound of my voice, is there anyone that would say, Pastor Ben, I want to have a relationship with my heavenly father. I heard what you said, that he loved me so much that he sent Jesus to die on a cross for me to forgive me of my sins. And because of that, I can be forgiven and, and, and know that I'm going to heaven. And I want to know without a doubt that, that my sins are forgiven, that, I'm a, that God is my father and I'm his son, that heaven is where I'm going, and my life from this day forward can be different because of how much he loves me. So is there anyone in here that say, Pastor Ben, that's me. Would you please pray for me? Would you just raise your hand and say, Pastor Ben, pray for me. I want to have a relationship with my heavenly father just like you described. Is there anyone at all? take a moment. If you're watching online and that's you, drop us a comment. We will follow up with you. For the rest of us, as I see no hands, for the rest of us that are here right now, do you have a good picture of who your father is? Alexa, would you come? Do you have a good picture of who your father is? He's a father who loves you, who cares about you, who sent his son to die for you, who gives good gifts. I want you to walk out of here this Father's Day saying, I've got a good, and we don't have to sing that song. I want you to walk out of here, though, saying, I've got a really good heavenly father. I've got a great heavenly father. I've got the kind of, the kind of father in heaven who, who loves me so much that I never want to walk away from him. Lex, if you'd lead us in a song, if you have one. And I don't know what song she's going to sing, but I want us to take the next couple of moments to just, just in our own words, whether it's singing the song or, 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 or just you talking with your heavenly father. Thank him for what he's done. Thank him for loving you. And purpose today that you're going to You're going to talk about him the way he deserves to be talked about. And you're going to live for him in a way that brings honor to who he is. 
Also, as we do that, if you'd like prayer for anything, maybe you're here today, you're not feeling well, you want prayer, we'll anoint you with oil and pray with you. Maybe there's a need, maybe there's something else going on in your life you want prayer for. As Alexa leads us, and, and don't rush out yet, we're going we're gonna to close together here in a moment. We're going to open these altars, and if, again, if you'd like prayer for anything, come, and, and we'll be glad to pray with you. I want us to walk, all of us, in the fullness of joy that comes from knowing we have a Father in heaven who loves us beyond words can even describe. Alexa, if you would lead us in a chorus, a song. Let's lift our voices. Let's just spend some time praising our Father. And again, if you'd like prayer, come. We'll be glad to pray with you. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, it's all. One of the things that I love about my kids growing up in church when they were younger was them learning simple songs like that, that are so simple yet so powerful. Sometimes we'll, we'll learn a song and there's three choruses and a bridge and a, and a, and a, and a second chorus and an ending, and, but just those two simple words, Jesus loves me, this I know, is so powerful. And I want you to walk out of here with that in your head. Jesus loves me. This I know. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. Guess what? Compared to God, you're all, and we are all little ones. Some of you like, you look around the church and you're like, I'm the littlest one. We're all little ones. Little ones. To him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. That's my father. That's your father. So when you hear people talking about God is this and God is that and God terrible and God horrible, step up and say, I don't know who you're talking about, but my father, that's not him. He's different, he's loving. He's caring. He's kind. He's the best father anyone could ever ask for. And then take the next step and say, can I introduce you to my father? And if they say yes, praise the Lord. You've got a new brother, a new sister, a new member of the family. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, God, for that. The reminder today of the fact that you are a, a, a father who loves us, a good father. 
God, I pray as we leave this place today, God, that wherever we go, we would, we would speak well of our Father in heaven. We would be, have a desire and a hunger to introduce people to our Father. To tell them how much he loves them. And how he paid the price for their sins. God, I pray that we would begin to find ourselves free of, of the confusion that this world has of who God is. And have our minds renewed by the word and what we've heard today of who he really is. God, I pray your blessing on, on the men of this church, whether they be biological fathers to someone right now or, or they're, they're gonna be a father somewhere in the future, God, or, or God, they just have a place of influence in someone's life right now, God. I pray you would use us to proclaim the good news of Jesus, to live out our faith in a way that points people to you. God, thank you for the, the, the gift that was prepared by, the, by, by Ben and his family, Father. Thank you for the fellowship that we're going to have. I pray you would cause us to continually grow closer and closer to one another. Bless your people, I pray. Be with them as they go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, as you head out, someone will be there uncovering. Again, guys, help yourselves. Ladies, give the guys a chance first, then you can hop in there.